Welcome into the live, uh, or semi-live, I guess, for our Broadway Insiders. Private uh, live, yeah. Uh, edition of the Mike Herndon Show, week 18. Uh, it is the end of the NFL season. Um, well, for most, uh, for all but 14, maybe 15, depending on whatever the NFL is doing with uh, uh, this Bills Bengals situation um, and the reactions to that, but it is the end of the season for most of the NFL, and um, yeah, we're uh, we're going to be sad to see it go, but uh, probably not sad to see whoever loses this Titans Jaguars game uh, go bow out of our lives uh, until next mm. uh, September. But um, I am Mike Herndon, uh, and I am joined, of course, by Easton Freeze, our uh, director of published content at BroadwaySportsMedia.com dot com, and uh, the co host of this show. So. Um, yeah, Eason, week 18, here we are. Mike, here we are. Where Where is the time gone? We've done 18 of these. Um, it doesn't feel like that, but we are going to uh, at least do this last one. There's a chance that we have more of these to come if the Titans can can win and we have some more tape to look at as they head into the playoffs, but that's, that's going to come down to this weekend's game against the Jaguars. Before we dive into that today, which we will do as we always do, previewing the game later on in the show, we have some tape to get into from last Thursday night. Feels like a long time ago. Um, the, the Titans took on the Cowboys and in a loss of double digits, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I think they lost by at least 10 in that game. It was about as encouraging as a double digit loss can be, I think, because of one man, Josh Dobbs. And that's who we're going to focus on mostly today in the film section. Yeah, they uh, they did not cover, which uh, you know, did not for cover. us, uh, you know, Cowboys uh, minus thirteen and a half ticket holders um, was good, good for uh, the the financial uh, <laughs> situation, but not good for the Titans, obviously. Yes. Um, but the fact that it was that close, honestly, and and I told everybody last week, I was like, bet whatever you've got on alternate spread lines and stuff like that, um, which you know wouldn't wouldn't have hit it. Um, yep. So they uh, they kept it close. Um, much closer than I thought they would. And and I did think Dobbs gave the offense some life and we can get into kind of what happened there and obviously did it without Derrick Henry, which I think is an important piece of context that um, should not be lost here as we discuss what the offense did. Cause I mean, look, Dobbs was far from perfect. Like he uh, turned the ball over twice, um, could have Almost turned the ball three over times. three or four times. Right. Um, so there was, there were some issues um, to be sure, but really encouraged specifically by what he was able to do on third down. Um, because if you spin forward and and we'll look at a, a lot of his third down throws actually in our tape section here as we get into it. But uh, as you spin forward and looking into this week 18 matchup, I think the third down stuff is critical because ultimately that's what the Titans need their quarterback to do. They want, they want to run the ball on first and second down as much as possible. Uh, maybe they're mixing some play action, that kind of thing. But for the most part, the purpose of the quarterback for the Titans, as far as they're concerned, how they've set them, themselves up, and we can debate about whether or not that's the smart way to build an offense, but the way they've set themselves up is the quarterback is to bail them out and continue to, you know, extend drives on third downs. And they, you know, they want to get it to third and medium, third and short, and then have a quarterback who can functionally make the plays on third down to continue drives and get the, get the, get Derek Henry more swings at hitting a home run, you know? So that exactly. is yep. um, kind of the function of the quarterback. And Dobbs did a really good job with that, especially on third downs. He was seven of 16 converting, uh, in, in the game, which is above their season long average, which obviously includes a lot of Ryan Tannehill um, and well above what they did with Malik Willis on third downs uh, during his three starts. So I think that is the key reason as to why Dobbs is the guy for week 18 uh, as opposed to Willis. I just think he gives them more opportunities on third downs than than Willis does. And we're about to dive into some film from his first NFL start. But before we do, I see that there are a handful of you insiders already watching with us live today. We are super appreciative of you guys being here with us and having an insider pass. Of course, that gives you access to things like this that the others just simply can't get. They're too cheap to get. And, and so you guys uh, get to see the show live. You also have the opportunity to interact with the show live in the chat. Leave comments as we go, and we will be happy to uh interact with you, talk with you through some of these plays, and uh, we'd love to answer any questions that you might have as well. So, Mike, 
Let's start with this first play uh, from the game. This is a, a drop back for Josh Dobbs. What did you see here that you found interesting? Yeah, so this is one. Uh, this is the the Burks drop, and I think this is partially a. Uh, We've seen this, this is one Burks, before. You know, jumping when he doesn't really need to. Uh, I'm and not he's sure done it why. All season, he did it. He, this is almost a carbon copy of the drop he had against the Raiders. Yep. Uh, earlier in the season, but um, you know, it, it, setting aside the Burks drop, the thing I love about this from Dobbs is he is very decisive here. Again, this is a third down. So he converted seven of 16. This is one of the nine that he did not. Um, actually, two of the uh, nine that he did not were just str- flat out drops. This one and then the Robert Woods one, which we'll also look at. But the thing I love about this throw is that Burks, if you really pause the, the film right when uh, Dobbs starts to load to throw okay. uh, this, this slant, um, you can see, I mean, Burks is not out of his break yet. He is, he's, nope. I mean, this ball is, the ball is coming out of Dobbs's hand right now. Like right Completely where we have the anticipatory so throw. This, yeah. He is anticipating him winning the, the route. He is letting it go on time with pressure um, at his back and putting the ball in a spot. Now, look, could the ball have been more accurate? Yeah, it, it could have been ahead of Burks. And if it had been, it gives Burks a chance to catch and run and maybe create an explosive play. Um, so those are the kind of things you'd like to see him clean up and hopefully, you know, that maybe the timing is a little better after, you know, 15 days in the, in the offense instead of eight, uh, you know, so, um, but the fact that he's throwing the ball with confidence, hitting his back step, getting up, getting it out. Um, that is what I like to see here. And and that's why, you know, Dobbs is, average time to throw in this game was a half second faster than Malik Willis's average over the, his three starts. So that is a huge deal for an offensive line that is already was already Uh struggling and is now even worse because, you know, this game he had uh, no Nick Petit Frere, which I know we've been on uh, MPF a lot over the last few weeks about him not playing um, or him giving up more than, than what you would like him like to see. Right. Uh, He's way better than LaRaven Clark. LaRaven Clark was horrendous in this game. Like, and and that's not a surprise, but it does show you that, like, I know at points we were just saying, try anyone besides Daly. Um, We were right for them to need to try Dylan Raiden's. We were very wrong as the show to mention LaRaven Clark's name. Yeah, Raiden's should have tried him earlier. No doubt about it. I I blame them for that, but this, you can see with little Raven Clark, exactly what they saw at practice and why they did not play him against uh, over uh, Dennis Daly. Cause I mean, little Raven Clark is just a worse Dennis Daly. So um, (laughs) Dennis Daly, no longer the worst tackle to start in the NFL this year. He is now second worst uh, to his counterpart. It's hard to be worse than the worst, but he is managed. He is. Uh, So it is, um, but yeah, it is. It was him getting the ball out on time is such a critical element to what the Titans are going to have to do because the Jaguars' pass rush isn't isn't an elite pass rush, but it is good enough, especially with Josh Allen and you know I'm assuming Trevon Walker will play in this game. Um, we saw what Trevon Walker did to Dennis Daly in the first matchup. There is going to be pressure, especially off the edges in this game, even if you know Nick Petit Frere plays uh, you know who knows how effective he'll be with an injury and he already was you know kind of hit or miss uh before so being able to get the ball out on time is absolutely critical for the titans and dobbs showed the ability to do that and mike i'm, I'm gonna pull up the next clip but the word that you use that i think really sums up very concisely why this josh dobbs performance was so clearly better from an eye test standpoint than what Malik Willis can offer is that word you used at the, at the very top of that clip. It's the decisiveness. And I think that this is kind of a Walmart version, at least to me in the moment, it felt like a Walmart version of what we saw when Ryan Tannehill came in and took over for Marcus Mariota. You saw a guy that came in and was not hesitating in ways that may left you frustrated as a fan or as somebody watching the game, he was not perfect by any stretch of the imagination, but he was, being decisive, pulling the trigger, making reads and going with his gut and being confident in his, in his decision making. We saw not a whole lot of that from Malik Willis. There was a lot of throw the ball, throw the ball, throw the ball, scrambling when you just wanted to get rid of it. That is is a sign of, I think, a quarterback that lacks that confidence, that decisiveness. 
Yeah, and I mean that that went all the way back to the preseason with Willis being his like biggest flaw, and it continues to be. I mean, maybe maybe he's marginally improved, but it is not a whole lot different uh, than what we saw in preseason. Um, then uh, you know this this is the other drop. Um, this is the Robert Woods drop. Uh, I think this is the second drive of the game. And again, like the ball is a little high here, right? Like it, it's definitely a little bit high from Dobbs. Could have been thrown better. However, this is a catchable football. Like this is a, a catch that you expect an NFL wide receiver to be able to make. Yep. Uh, and it just goes off his hands and is dropped. But again, he's throwing the ball aggressively. Like he's hitting his back foot. He's stepping up in the pocket, releasing it. Uh, you know, he's showing off a pretty good, uh, pretty good arm strength too. I feel like the ball is, uh, you know, he's, he's got some good velocity here. Um, and it, it's just, it's the decisiveness, right? Like again, it is not you know, that Dobbs is some miracle worker. It's just that he is sitting here and he's trusting what he has been told the offense is going to give him, right? Like this is your read, trust your read, make the throw. That's what he's doing. And he's, you know, just doing, he's, he makes the offense on time. Like that is the whole, like, that is probably the best way to say it is like, he's on schedule. The, the offense is on time. Like he, he is not sitting around waiting and you know, it's not messing up the timing or the receivers, the timing with the blocking, like he, everything. He's the Mike is, White to the, to time. this, to this Zach Wilson situation. I mean, Mike right. White comes in and the reason he works isn't because he's good. It's because he runs the offense the way it's supposed to be run. That's what Dobbs came in and did for the Titans. Yeah, for sure. And, and like, you know, like Ryan saying here, he is, Athletic enough, like he is not, uh, I don't think, quite the runner that Malik Willis is or no. quite as elusive as Malik Willis, he's but he does deal. have that element, and, and he will threaten in the run game. Now, they didn't run him hardly at all in this game. I think they he had 12, 12 yards total on three carries, um, and probably two of those were scrambles. I, I think I remember maybe one designed run for Dobbs in this game. So we may see an expansion of, of his run ability uh, or his – usage in the run game in this this matchup but he's uh he's got that element to him plus the decisiveness which is you know kind of what we'll continue to come back to is kind of the the hallmark of why he is the guy here here's another pass to robert woods on third down and this one was a completion yeah again like this one's on time It, it is again just he hits the backs he hits the last step of his drop here it's just a quick quick out Nothing special here, but he is reading the off coverage. He knows he's going to be able to get the ball. And this is a very accurate ball. Um, very accurate ball right where it needs to be. Hits hits Woods right in the hands as he's going out of bounds. Easy, easy pitch and catch. Like this is made to look way easier than it really is. Again, and this is a you know an out route to the far side of the field, um, showing off a little bit of arm strength here. Like he's not, he doesn't have a cannon, he's not Josh Allen or anything, but he's got adequate arm strength. Um, and you know, there, it's just, it's professional quarterback play is what it is. So, yep. I mean, Hey, I look at this game and you think the, the turnovers are one thing and we can look at a couple of those. Um, but if he can avoid turnovers, I think the Titans will have a real chance in this game. And that's easier said than done, of course. Um, but I really think that this offense moved way better than I thought it would, frankly, especially without Derrick Henry. Um, and, uh, you know, as I described, uh, Hassan Haskins on F-Word Spot this week, he's like a, a saltine cracker yeah. uh, of mm-hmm. a running back. Like, just so bland. Like, you know, it, yep. there's just nothing to him. I mean, he's – I think he's a good player. I think he runs hard. I think he's tough. You know, he got that one short yardage tough run where he kind of ran over to Marcus Lawrence, and you're like, oh, wow, that's cool. There's just no juice outside of that. It is very – No, I mean, he's football. he's the Madden creative player that you get when you just unbox the game and you haven't unlocked any of the nice features. Like, it's the base model. Like, he, you know, he's – you're not getting the leather seats. You're not getting the trim or the spoiler or the sunroof. It's just the regular one. Nothing I think special. he's – he is a poor man's James Conner is kind of how I view <laughs> okay, him. Okay. That's, that's a less flattering way of putting it, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, here's another. Uh, this had to have been the biggest pass and catch of the day. This was the the raising math down the field shot that finally worked. It only took 17 weeks. 
Yeah, they finally get uh, the racy deep ball that, that, you know, everybody saw at training camp. Everyone was excited about. and We saw it in that preseason game, and then it took uh, three months for us to ever see it again. I will say, you know, it's a small sample size, but one thing that is driving me nuts already about racing math is his tendency to just fall down as he's catching the ball ball. for no reason. Yes, yes, yes. That is is typically a uh, surefire indication of a guy who doesn't fully trust his hands uh, because it is – it makes it a little bit easier to catch the ball. Like if you're jumping unnecessarily or falling unnecessarily, it, that is a guy who generally just does not trust himself to catch the football. And so I feel like as he gains confidence, it, it has maybe to, we yes. see that go away. He has um, what can you can count his career receptions on one hand right now. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he's barely played. Um, so, but again, I like this from Dodds from the standpoint of he has, uh, he has, you know, a quick read here. He has to see that the safety drops down, right? Like as soon as the safety drops down, he knows where he's going because Dallas shows cover two pre-snap or some sort of uh, too high coverage. Uh, they drop the safety down. As soon as the safety drops down, it looks like Dobbs kind of triggers and says, all right, I'm going to Racy here. Um, and, it, you know, it's a matchup that Racy obviously wins. Like he shows that ability to get on top of the corner and separate. Like he is still separating even – you know, well after the corner's beat and trying to make up ground. Um, so that's what you are excited about with Racy McMath. Um, but it's also a great ball from Dobbs. I mean, Dobbs puts this on the money, uh, you know, beats the corner, gets it up and down ahead of the safety, being able to get over uh, to try to make a play. So this was a, a throw that shows a lot of touch, uh, a lot of in, like not in, not really anticipation, but he quickly makes the read again, decisive. Um and then is able to get the ball placed where it needs to be for his receiver to make a play. Um, and again, yep. Racy, just run through the ball, man. Catch it. You can you can do this. Yes. All right. Well, we've got a couple clips now of the the things that Josh Dobbs is going to have to clean up this week before Week 18. We saw the Titans and the Jaguars in their first meeting. R- really, the only decisive factor in that game was turnovers, and the Titans lost tremendously on the tur- turnover front. Um, Josh Dobbs, as you mentioned, not the cleanest in protecting the ball in his first start. So we've got a couple of clips here um, of both of his interception, or both of his turnovers, interception and fumble. And then the two turnovers that were almost turnovers, but uh, they ended up recovering them. Yeah, and this one, this one really is, is, should have been a pick, obviously. I mean, Trevon Diggs nine times out of 10 catches that. And, you know, he may have taken that to the house if he had. Um, but really, I, I, I viewed this play more as there's a couple things going on here. One, I, I'm not sure what Chris Conley is actually coached to do here. Um, he runs as if he's blocking. Like he looks like he's trying to set himself up for a block here. And I, I don't know if the the plan here was that this was just going to be a one read quick hitter and he needed to get the ball out quicker to, I believe it's Austin Hooper or it's either Hooper or Swaim on the crosser. Um, but regardless, I, I assume that he needed to get this ball out quicker because it looks like Conley is trying to block and set himself up to block. Either that or Conley needs to run off the corner and give him a, a little bit more runway. And honestly, you'd rather him run the corner off because then you're not really relying on a receiver to block, even if it is the, the best run blocker in the league or whatever Chris Conley uh, considers himself a, as a blocker. Um, it, you you just rather run the guy off. It, you know that's the best block that you can have is just having him voluntarily run away from the play. Um, so I'm not sure about the design on this one of having him set up to block. Um, but either way, this looks like one that Dobbs was a little bit late to. Um, and I, Diggs is one of the best anticipation players in the league. That's why he is uh, you know such a playmaker and makes all these interceptions. He has an eye for plays like this. So. It's a good play. Uh, it's probably a little bit late from Dobbs, and and certainly there's some questions about whether Conley should have been blocking or running off the corner. But either way, potential. There's another questionable play right here. This is one that did end up being a turnover near the end of the game. Josh Dobbs throws his first career interception. Yeah, and this one was um, to me like this starts. It's like a good, 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 bad play um, because yes. he hits the top of his drop. 
And the uh, as as per usual in this game, both tackles are getting destroyed by Demarcus Lawrence and uh, I believe Micah Parsons, um, as you'd kind of expect. Um, so he hits the top of the drop. The two ends are both converging on him. He steps up, steps through the tackle, avoids it, gets out of the pocket, and has the ability. I mean, he has the ability to run here. This is where I'd like to see him. Uh, you know, take off and maybe try to run, get upfield a little bit. I know he, you know he might not have gotten a lot there, but he could have gotten close to the sticks. Um, but he tries to make a play. And, and honestly, again, he's probably just a little bit late getting to Robert Woods because Woods does come back and is open on the sidelines. But uh, the underneath corner, you know, is just able to sag off and makes a really nice play, first of all. And this, this is a great play by the corner who kind of steps up and then drops and makes the play. But he definitely sees this. He sees the opening. He just sees it a touch too late uh, and gives the corner a chance to, to come back um, and, and make the play. So, yeah, it's a lot of good here. But, you know, and again, like, you know, maybe you just either pocket this thing and try to get as much as you can with the the on the ground or you just throw it out of bounds at that point. Right. Um, he's trying to make a play and I, I can't really blame him um, too much for this interception. It's, it's a good play by, by the Cowboys. Another play of his that ended up being a turnover. If I can find it here. Yeah. So this is actually, this was his first fumble. So I think this one was recovered by the Titans. Yeah. He actually recovers this himself. And again, okay. you know, it, this That's one's right. a, design deal where uh the, the titans are bringing aaron brewer across and ha- asking him to block marcus lawrence which is a tough ass good matchup uh, good matchup it is one of those things where like they've done this before and it's worked um but they have not done this against demarcus lawrence or a player of that caliber it's just a terrible matchup um it's one of those where you know it, it maybe schematically it works on paper um and i guess the idea is you are trying to show a run look and and get you know get the cowboys reacting in a certain way to the the guard looking like he's pulling initially uh to open up some windows but it, again just you got to have the common sense of like hey putting aaron brewer in space against demarcus lawrence is a bad idea um and it, that doesn't happen. So look, Dobbs, there's not a ton he can do here because Lawrence just reaches back and swipes and hits the hits the ball right out of his hands. And Dobbs does a good job of picking it up. Now you can say like ball security, you you never never want to fumble, right? Like <laughs> um yes. you could always be better with ball security when you put it on the ground. So can be better, um, but not a not a ton of issues there um from a Dobbs standpoint. Just just a bad scheme to me. Well, here's the fumble that was lost. And again, this one to me not terrible, not not mostly on Dobbs. This is Laraven Clark getting beat like a drum. Um, you know, Demarcus Lawrence absolutely had his way uh, with the the right tackle in this game. Um, but this is a ball security thing to me because he is sure he's getting hit, um, but he initially has the ball and he just is not able to put it away enough, and they're able to rake it out kind of as as they're bringing him to the ground. Um, and, and look, this isn't a play where you cannot have a sack or a turnover. It is third down. It is on the edge of field goal range or you are in field goal range, uh, you know, at, at the snap. So you just cannot take a snap sack. You cannot certainly not put the ball on the ground. Um, so this is one where you'd like to see, you know, maybe he senses the pressure quicker, uh, gets the ball out, throws it at the feet. You know, this is one of those things where like, Tom Brady saves his offensive line to bacon constantly. And look, you yep. know, comparing anyone to Tom Brady is not fair, but just want to point this out because this is something you'll see Brady do all the time. When there is immediate pressure, he is the world's best at like, he will just pick a receiver and throw it at their feet, throw mm-hmm. it in a safe place, make it to where it's not grounding. Uh, you know, don't throw it out of bounds or whatever. Just throw it at a receiver's feet, whether it's back, whether it's somebody, you know, a tight end, just throw it at an eligible receiver's feet. And Brady is excellent at that. So that's something you'd like to see him do there. But again, the tackle is not giving him much of a chance on either of those last two plays. That's going to be it for our film section today. If you're listening to us live, just going to ask you to stick around real quick. Bear with us as we transition to the back half of the show. 
which when this comes out in its regular recorded fashion is just for you guys, the insiders who are getting to watch live here. But for those of you that are listening at a later date on the recording or watching on YouTube, we have to ask you now to go over to broadwaysportsmedia.com and become a Broadway insider today. That's the only way you can get the back half of the show and get the full video version of the show each week. We have a ton to talk about still, a lot to talk about in anticipation of the Titans and the Jaguars coming up this Saturday night. We're also going to get into our Moneymaker Mike segment and get on the horse this week. We are at 500 on the year, and we are going to have a good winning week and finish above 500 and finish making some money. We've also got the mic drop segment. Mike's got his hottest take of the week to leave with us. All of that and more can be yours if you become a Broadway insider today over at broadwaysportsmedia.com. Go to the insider page under the more tab on the homepage and you can become a Broadway insider signing up for just 99 cents for your first month. That is practically free. If uh, you, you don't know 99 cents, you can find that walking around on the street outside. People just throw that away essentially. So throw it away towards us we will collect it and give you a free insider pass for it um after that it's just the price of a cup of coffee each month or you can go and become an annual insider when you use code annual and that will get you the entire year for 20 bucks off the regular price just 49.99 that's a 40 percent savings over the monthly come and become an insider today get the full mike herndon show get our articles that are behind the paywall get early access to specific articles get access to uh, fantasy leagues that I'm having to send out payouts right now. Folks are getting their money back from winning these fantasy leagues. It's paying for their insider membership. So I highly recommend you join and then compete and just win. It's easy. You can make your money back that way. All right. We will talk to you behind the paywall when you go become an insider and join us again.